do you think Congress did a good job in overseeing Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae? So, um, no, they did a terrible job. <laughs> uh, no, do you think, think they've done a good job in overseeing the Social Security Administration? You know, I think that's a good program, actually. Um, well, we're not going to get rid of it. My question is, if we have trillions of dollars in unfunded liabilities, mm -hmm. don't you think there needs to be better oversight? You know, I, I think that we're, we are aware of Social Security needing more money, and I'm all for it. Oh, more money. Right. We do, yeah, now, you know, you, you, now you know there's that, that. Let's go back to this actuary that you spoke of. Yeah, sure. Who, who explains that we're running out of people to pay into Social Security. Isn't that the real reason you want to tap you know into these it's private not pensions? It's the numbers of people. Hold um, on now, but, but follow my second part. Yeah, okay. Isn't the real reason you want to tap into these private pensions is because Social Security is out of money? Um, no, no, no. I, Social Security is a good base. We need A good base uh, of what? Debt. Uh, uh, it's, uh, well, for your retirement income security, it's a guaranteed source of income. For well, the it's guaranteed life. to the extent that the government doesn't go bankrupt. And you know, it's, governments do go bankrupt. Yeah, but it's never missed a payment in all of its years since 19. Yeah, that doesn't mean a thing when the crash comes. Up. Now, well, let me ask you this. I don't mean to be belligerent. I'm stupid on this stuff. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. What kind of pension do you have? I have a great pension. It's, a, yes. it's like the kind of pension I want everyone to have. Well, it's, I didn't ask that. What kind of you don't so get to make is, a decision? So what it is is I'm forced for, to save ten percent of our my salary every single paycheck, I see. Um, and it goes into a fund that's professionally managed. And my trustees bargain with the Wall Street firms to get the best right, prices. Right. And, and I'm sure. And I'm sure you have resisted this tooth and nail. No, I think it's a really good. It forced me to save when I was. Well, how 25. much are you saving each year? I, I save ten percent of my salary. It forces me to. So I don't want to know. Is it over five thousand? Um. Yeah, it is over five thousand. Well, why should you be able to do that? Um, I know exactly, exactly. I mean, why uh, shouldn't you I'm just? Totally... Why shouldn't you have to live off Social Security? Exactly. I think everybody should have what why I. Why shouldn't you have to live off at twelve hundred dollars a month? It's outrageous. No, no. Uh, that's why uh, people need a. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Social Security pays on average twelve to fourteen hundred dollars right. a month. People need more. It's a magnificent program. You just said that. It is. It's a good base. The people. So, need to so it's twelve hundred to fourteen hundred a month. It's right. dead broke. It's got trillions of dollars it's in unfunded obligation, and your problem is the two percent that the mutual funds take. It's a big problem. It is. It, it's a little cuts everywhere. We are really you a need PA, Are you a PhD? I, I have a PhD. I do. Can I call you Doctor G then? Hey, Doctor G. I agree with you, uh, Doctor G. Doctor G. Do you realize? Do you realize the 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 Rube Goldberg type logic that's being applied here? So you think that because Social Security? Needs no, I help. think I think professors should leave the rest of us alone. <laughs> I think liberal members of Congress should leave the rest of us alone. Hey, but how are hold you? Hold on now. Hold on, my turn. And if I have five trillion dollars, yeah. like some of your buddies, like Bill Gates and Buffett, or billion, yeah, yeah, and I want to invest that money, which creates jobs, which makes money available for mortgages. You know, we don't all stick it in our mattresses. Sure, yeah. Then I should be able to do that without Doctor G telling me I can't. What do you think? Oh, please, invest your money. I'm just telling you, don't, um, you might need help. Uh, now, who's smarter? Credit. Who's smarter, the individual with his own money or Barney Frank? You know, uh, an individual with their own money had been caught with 100% equities. Um, yeah, but, but Barney Frank was in charge of Freddie Mae and Fannie Mac. You get my yeah, drift? And they had a lot of pressure from the industries. Well, um, maybe they did, but they're grown ups. Clinton and Bush let those in, let the industry run wild. No, no, no. Barney Frank and uh, Chris Dodd did not want to tame these companies, did they? You know. Come on, come on, Doctor G. Come on. Yeah. Um, look, they could have done more, but who are you voting people for? Don't have that kind of control. Who are, who are you voting for? I'm voting for Obama. How but come? you probably could have guessed that. Yes, I could. <laughs> well, and look. What if would it, you do for yes. people's retirement security? What do you mean, what would I do? I'm what doing it right do? now. I'm idea? paying for it. I pay into Social Security. Okay, but you need more. So where's your pension? Get off your ass and make a living. What do you think? Pretty yeah. good idea? Yeah, that's a good Rather idea. Rather than subsidize sloths and other things? You see, here's the problem. People need money to go to college. People need money to buy food. People yeah. need money to home warm their homes. People need money for their pensions. People need money for, for their children. People need lots of money. Now, the question is whether you favor a more capitalist system or a more socialist system. Uh, You're you know, a professor, hold on, who has anymore. lived in That's an environment of... Hold on now. 
You're mm-hmm. a professor who's lived in the environment of socialism. That, that's what a college is. It's a socialist uh, <laughs> enterprise. Hey, well, it's know, not, for, it's not capitalism. Dame. I taught at Notre Dame for 25 so? years. I, so? It wasn't a socialist. I was what, what the, I'm talking about the college environment is purely socialist. Where's the pri- unless the private sector deigns to give some money to it, that's perfectly yeah, fine. Yeah. But you take you're funded by taxes mostly. No, no, we're funded by students paying their bills. Well, I get that, but but you're and also then, subsidized heavily by state and federal government, including and, loans. Well, it's, that's the state work. But hey, I got it figured out, Doctor G. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than subsidize colleges with that money, we'll put it into Social Security. What do you say? I think that Social Security does need money. All um, right, my friend. And we have look, to take a careful look at the budget and look All right, listen to me. I got to go. You're a good sport. Just do me one favor, will you? Yeah. Stop destroying my country. <laughs> I'm live. I'm back. Oh, good Lord. It's pretty scary, isn't it, folks? You know, uh... Some idiot wrote a piece over there at the Daily Post, uh, Daily uh, Beast, I guess. I can't remember his name. I think his name's Moynihan or something. The problem with guys like Mark Levin, he says, is they do not, you know, they just don't connect with average people. Unlike some guy's name I can't pronounce, he said, and you wouldn't know anyway. You see, these people who pretend to be smart and then they assign us are smart people and tell us who we should be listening to are so completely out of touch, are so moronic. They don't understand. They define themselves. Why do you think I come behind this microphone every day and talk about liberty and private property rights in a constitutional system? Why do we talk about John Locke and Montesquieu and de Tocqueville? Why do we talk about the opposite? Plato's Republic and the Communist Manifesto and Hobbes's Leviathan. Why do we talk about these things? We talk about these things because we try to connect our history, our heritage, to events that are going on today that affect everybody in this country, whether you work in a coal mine, whether you work in a fishery, whether you're drilling for oil, whether you're driving a cab or a truck, whether you're white-collar, blue-collar, union, non-union, whether you live in the city or the suburbs or the exurbs or whatever the hell we call them anymore, we're talking about human rights. Human rights, not those defined by government, but those that are divine by providence. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about your individual sovereignty. We're talking about when you get up every morning and go to work and come home in the evening or at night, that the government should be be able to torment you and coerce you and take 20, 30, 40, 50 percent of what you earn and blithely go ahead and do whatever it wants with it, unmoored from constitutional government. That's tyranny. And for some reason, this is way too complicated for these morons at the Daily Beast Some people who write in other places, it's way too complicated. And yet, millions and millions of you from all walks of life, educated either in the streets or educated in schools, you get it. You get it. The problem with that professor is she's coming up with a scheme that is intended to deny you of your private property rights. And listen to the way they talk. I played along with her. We're denying the government money. Really? We work for the government now? We're subjects of the government? Oh, yes, yes, and it only helps the wealthy. That's right. Only millionaires and billionaires have 401k plans and IRAs, right? And the government's done such a great job running entitlement programs, running them right into the ground, that all we should do is give more and more to the government. We are not servants. We are not subjects. We are not slaves. We are human beings. We are individuals who have free will. And that's what this fight is about. You're going to get sucked into this welfare state, and it's going to chew you up and spit you out. And you're going to be miserable and poorer and less free as a result. That's what this battle's about. That's why we draw the line right now. That's why we demand that these Republicans fight and stop surrendering. We're Americans. We're not the French. We're not the Germans. We're not the English. We're Americans, damn it. And what Obama has done and what all these eggheads have done is they're importing a foreign philosophy into this country. Communism wasn't developed in America. It was developed in Europe, just like National Socialism, just like all the other crap they came up with to impose their will on the people. We broke away from that system. Am I speaking loud enough, clear enough, in small enough words for the morons at the Daily Beast? I certainly hope so. And what a stupid name for a website, Daily Beast. 
daily schmucks is what you are. Now, 